Are there any questions that anyone might have? You know, somebody asked me a question earlier today about the difference between discipline and control. And we think, you know, almost logically that in order to discipline ourselves, we have to control everything. And it's not true. You understand there's a very big difference between real discipline and having to control. Having to control usually comes from the ego. It comes from self-importance, thinking we know better than everybody else, and that we are going to control every situation and conceptualize it and make it seem as if it belongs in a certain pattern of behavior that we understand. You know, discipline is another thing. Discipline is an organic growth in a human being that practices within themselves to develop a system that can connect them with God. Our discipline is an organic thing. It, it is learned because we build a strength inside ourselves that enables us to truly, you know, work past all the blocks and tensions and limit, you know, in order to attain a goal. And I think this is a very important thing, you know, to understand. And is certainly an element in the growth of anybody that practices deep spiritual work. I mean, if you have a goal, you understand, you don't get to the goal by controlling everything. You get to the goal by having the will and the power inside yourself to overcome all the obstacles, you know, which means you build a system inside that is strong enough to do that. The only way to build a system like that that I know of is to connect with spirit. And if you're connecting with spirit, for God's sake, you can't control anything. So, you know, it was a very important question, and I think it needed to be talked about here because I'm sure it affects just about everybody. Does anyone have a question they would like to ask? Stuart, I have a question. Yes, Bob. So it sounds like the corollary would be that if you're in control, you're not connected to spirit. Is that true? Uh, I would say probably not, Bob. You're controlling people that control things, control them according to the way they conceptualize life. And they want everything to fit into a box. And, you know, it usually doesn't work. You know, real discipline is, you know, using your system, your will, your need to attain a goal in life. And you attain it because you truly get the power inside yourself by connecting with spirit. And that power will give you the ability to attain goals. Now, how do you get there? You don't get there by controlling your environment, by controlling life, by controlling anything. You get there by really deep surrender inside and building a system that's strong enough to maintain that discipline so that you can attain the goal. And of course, the highest goal of all is just a state of spiritual enlightenment. <clears throat> so these two things, they, they almost work against each other. You know, people that need to control are often people that need to be right in every situation. You know, people that need, you know, that develop discipline, they have a one-pointedness, they need to attain a goal in life, and they need to overcome all the obstacles. So it's not really control, it's just build, it's an organic process of opening inside that gives you the strength to overcome all the obstacles that keep you from attaining things that you need to obtain in this world. Now, I'm sure a lot of people with vast intellects would disagree with me, but I really don't care, you know? I mean, I, 
I've been around enough people that try to control life and they just did nothing but make me crazy. I've been around people that, you know, have truly surrendered in depth inside themselves and built a powerful disciplined system inside themselves that were connected to spirit. You know, those people let the world be, you know, they didn't have to control the world. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome, Bob. You're asking great questions, Bob. Thank you. Stuart, I have a question. Yes. Sir. Um, how do you know you are in the right path of anything? Like your goal, your choosing partner, your what you're doing with your life. Like, how do you know it's the right path? I'll tell you how I know through probably two or three hundred mistakes that taught me an enormous amount about my life, about what was real for me, how to make choices, how not to be offended by the things I did that were mistakes. You know, uh, all of those things become, you know, what educates you, what truly gives you knowledge about the way to function in the world. And along with all those mistakes was spending every day of my life for the last 50 years, building a system inside that connected me to higher energy in the universe. And building that system enabled me to be guided by that energy. And that energy always chose for me exactly what I needed at any given time in my life. And sometimes the things that were chosen for me were very difficult, things that were almost impossible for me to deal with. And I was told by these energies, you have to learn. You have to learn how to get stronger because of these decisions you've made. That's how, Shisham, I don't, you know, I mean, there's no, I don't know another way to do it, you know, because life is so terribly complex. And we try to figure out life in our minds and our brain. We try to get logical solutions to things and they, they almost never work. We grow inside ourselves and we build a system organically that is strong enough to connect with a higher force in the universe. You know, and suddenly we're being guided by a different type of energy. We're be, we, being, we, we have gone into a state of you know, a deep surrender that allows this spiritual energy to guide our lives. And it brings into our lives, you know, miracles, wonderful things. It also brings into our lives things that are difficult because we need to learn something from those things. And I've, over the course of my life, I've, I've learned to not negate or reject anything positive, the negative, the good or the bad, all the stuff that I see in the world is my teacher. And what it's teaching me is how to continue to grow inside myself. And another way I did it, I used to throw myself into impossible situations. I really mean this, especially economically, I would throw myself into situations that was almost like diving into the middle of the Pacific Ocean and trying to swim for land, you know? And then I would say, how am I gonna work through this? And I knew the only way that I could work through these situations and get to the other side was that I needed to draw upon higher energy in the universe. That gave me the strength to work out all of these situations. And I can't tell you how many of them there were. You know, one after the other, I would put myself in those situations. I needed to grow. I needed to work against something that was much bigger than myself. And in order to work against something much bigger than myself, I had to open to situations like that. I mean, I, I've explained to you what I told it a million. One of them was I got a phone call from Rudy's mother after Rudy passed on. And she offered to sell me two truckloads, you know, of art. And 
you know, at first I said, Ray, this is crazy. I'm living in the middle of Baptist America. What am I going to do with all that? You know, the Hindu and Buddhist art. She said, think about it. I thought about it for five minutes. And I said, Stuart, this is a test that you need in your life. You need to be able to do this. You need to be able to succeed at this. And you need to be able to grow inside yourself to where you're strong enough to make this work for you. I called her back 15 minutes later, 10 minutes later, and I said, Ray, I'll do it. And I put myself in debt for about $175,000, you know, which today would be probably $2 million in today's money. And I said, okay, you know, and I kept drawing upon this higher force of energy came into my, and it eventually over time enabled me to work through all of that. It also enabled me to open a very interesting gallery in New York City that did business from day one. That was the chance I took, but it was also a, a conscious choice because I knew I needed something huge to work against. And it was at that point, it was very, I mean, I had maybe $500 in the bank when I did that. It was a huge choice. I wound up paying back all the money I owed. I wound up having a very successful gallery in New York that was selling to ultimately to best collectors and museums around the world. But it was a choice I made. And I said, I need something like this, you know? I need something that almost seems impossible to work against because I need to get the strength to be able to succeed at this. And where was I going to get the strength? It came from my connection with God, higher energy. Every meditation class you know, enabled me to build a stronger internal life for myself. And I can go off and rattle off ah, 25, 30, 50 things like this that I did in my life because I needed a bigger test. And my purpose was not to make money. My purpose was to truly learn how to get to God. I mean, money never interests me. Yeah, I used to have to do it because I had huge responsibilities. <laughs> I had big, big bills to pay every month. So I had to make money, but it wasn't my major need. My major need was to get to God. I needed these tests in the world in order for me to get that kind of inner strength and to get ultimately clarity of choice. You know, and you know, this is how I did it. Everybody's not going to do it the same way. You know, I mean, look, and while I was building all that stuff in New York, I was running ashrams all over the world. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, if I would ever sat down, they would tell them what I was doing with my life. Nobody would believe it. You know, ashram in, in Greece, in Berlin, in Paris, in Zurich, in Sao Paulo, you know, in Jerusalem. Plus, I'm running a business. I, you know, it was unbelievable. And supporting the ashram in New York, which used to cost me 15 to 20 grand a month to run that place. You know, and the only way I got to do it was taking the challenge and saying, Stuart, the only way you can do this and work on this level is to open to a higher force in the universe, build a system that can draw upon that energy. And it ultimately worked. I mean, now my life has gotten really a lot simpler, and I'm very grateful for that. Although it's opened up teaching this meditation all over the world, you know? which is a very big job that I have to do. And I never thought I'd have to do anything like this. So that's how I did it. I don't think everyone in the world is gonna do it that way. But I knew when I was younger, I knew my condition when I was younger. And I knew, Stuart, if you don't have something really big to work against, he said, you're gonna die. You need something strong enough to make you work so deep inside that you draw this energy from the cosmos and that really helps you to do two things, to succeed in this world and to be connected with God.
Thank you, Stuart. You no, know, and yes, Shisham, you're a young person. You have a lot of energy, you know, and you're very smart and learn what, you know, what your, what your pressure is, what your path is, what you have to do to really grow and expand inside yourself. Very important. I mean, I saw that the day I met you, dear. You know, you have an amazing creativity in you. And I hope in life that you channel that creativity to doing some really great things. I mean it, you know. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? And then there was Rudy. For six years, busted my ass, you know, buy that building, you know, Rudy, I have $600, it was a shop, I told you the story a billion times, you know, I mean, it, it, it was relentless, it was never enough, and he did it for a reason, because he knew that I would, I would just cut it off, you know, so he absolutely taught me how to do this by putting that kind of pressure on me. You know, he sent me to Texas. I never wanted to go to Texas, the last place in the world I would want to live, you know? And, you know, Denton, Texas. And I, I said to him, Rudy, I'm, you know, he sent me here for three weeks. It's been six months now. <laughs> I've been living here. Dude, he told me you're on your fourth day. That was his response. You're on your fourth day. And then I knew how the world was created in seven days. And it took nine years of working on myself to get free, to, get, to, to finally finish the cycle so I could move back to New York. And I knew I had to go back to New York because I knew I needed something impossible to work against. And I figured if I can do this and succeed spiritually in New York City, I can do it anywhere in the world. And that's the reason I moved back to New York. If I stayed in Denton, I'd be worth $400 million today with the way that place was growing and the money and, you know, the businesses and the this. But I knew I needed something impossible to work against. And to me, that was New York City. And that's why I moved back there. It was the only reason, you know. And what helped me do all these things? I mean, every class, every day, I would sit down and do inner work and connect with that, draw that energy to build the strength to be able to do the kind of things that I had to do with my life. Does anyone else have a question? Stuart. Yes. Didn't you have a small shop or Rudy shop one time? I had a gallery. Yeah, it was, it was small, but it got very big. I had a gallery on 13th Street and Broadway in Manhattan. And I sold uh, ancient art. I sold art from Tibet, China, you know, I started my antique business selling $10 wagon wheels and anything I could scrape up. I mean, I, you know, I tell you how I got in business, you know, I, when I went to Denton, Texas, it's a very interesting. I had $30 in my pocket, right? And I'm driving and I met this farmer who had seven barn loads of furniture that he wanted to get rid of. And you talk about God working for you. I said, how much do you want for all this? He said, $30. It's exactly the money I had on me. I gave it to him, cleaned them out, started stripping furniture, repairing furniture, doing flea markets, doing, you know, whatever, you know? And it grew from there. You know, eight years later, I'm selling art to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. 10 years later to the British Museum, the Guimet in Paris, to the major collectors in the world. That energy had to come from somewhere to go from wagon wheels 
<laughs> you, know, to, you know, half a million dollar Buddhas, you know, yeah. came from that here. It gave me the strength to be able to build my life that way. And I never wanted to be in business. I never thought of be. I hated business. But I also understood that business was kind of a miracle. It brought me in touch <laughs> with the strangest people on the earth. And I had to learn how to deal with these people without them upsetting the balance inside myself. And that's another reason I stayed in business, because I had to do that. I had to learn how to do that. Yeah. But I had a shop. And I had two yeah. galleries in New York. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm living the fantasy of you looking in the store and seeing Rudy in the back sitting there. And I remember walking to a little store in the window, seeing you in the back sitting there, walking in this tiny store like it was Rudy's store. So I'm living a half a fantasy in my head. It was probably your store, not Rudy's store. <laughs> it's my store. It was my yeah. store. Fantasy uh, in my head. That's all about it. Uh, and it's okay. I like it. <laughs> It was a store, <laughs> and you in the back. <laughs> I was. It was my store, my gallery. I wouldn't call it a store. It was <laughs> uh, so long ago. Okay, that's what I meant. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, if there are no more questions, then. I have just a few announcements to make. Uh, I've been announcing that uh, around the first of this next month, I'm gonna go on a vacation, which I really need to take. And I'll be back in about two, two weeks and a few days. There will be class when I get back. You know, I'm not abandoning everybody. I just need to, I've been doing this for two and a half years now with virtually, you know, with tiny breaks, a week here, a day here. And so I need to take a vacation. Um, there will be class when I get back, but I'll be leaving around the first of the month of December. And, uh, you know, you'll all be in my heart, take you with me wherever I am. You can see the sights with me. And what else? Oh, yeah. Also, I, I've been announcing it because I really like it. Bob Sink has done a wonderful job of developing my website and uh and i just posted on saturday bob posted uh, another work on tantra and it's becoming interesting because there's like a museum there now pictures of really incredible level of tibetan art and some indian art as well and i suggest people go there and read those things I, you might get something enormous out of them i'm having a wonderful time writing them and uh, uh, some of them are really, really very good. And there was another thing, but I can't think of it now. So anyway, God bless you all. There will be a class on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. And thank you and bless you. Good night, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Okay.